Yo, Kip is Scott here. What's going on, too? Welcome back to the channel. And today we're going to talk about pre outs, the RCA jacks on the back of your receiver or a preprocessor. What's the difference? Why would I want to buy a preprocessor if I have a receiver that already has? pre-outs for my speakers. What's the difference and is it worth it? We're going to discuss all of that, but make sure you guys discuss it with me down below in the comment section so we can get a little conversation going. Also, thank you guys so much. We are approaching 30,000 subscribers. Thank you guys so much for that. If you're not subscribed, hit that subscribe button. Hit the subscribe button. I'm going to try to figure out some giveaway to do at 30,000 subscribers. So if you want to be a part of that, now's the time to get subscribed as we are approaching really, really fast. All right, let's get back to the video. So some models of receivers have pre-outs. And what I mean by pre-outs are the RCA jacks on the back of your receiver that allow you to equip a external amplifier for additional power. So if you spend enough money on a receiver, if you get high enough in the manufacturer's lineup, you have the ability to not use the amplifiers built into your receiver, but plug in an external amplifier to get more power out of your speakers. And why would you want to do that? Well, for me personally, I have Kef R11s. Not only do they handle a lot of power, but they're not the most efficient speaker. So having more power than what an AV receiver can give me is highly beneficial to my audio system. So if I have an AV receiver and I have pre-outs for my speakers, meaning front, left, center, right, I have the ability to plug in my speakers to an external amplifier. I have the ability to bring out a lot more potential in my speakers that I wouldn't have with an AV receiver. So like we said, pre-outs allow you to add more power if you need it, but that's not the only purpose of pre-outs. Some receivers have a lot of channels to process. So let's say you have 11 total speakers, but your receiver can only power nine out of the full 11. That means you need external power to power the last two. So maybe you don't need more power, but you need more amplification in general. So you can plug in pre out to the back of your Avery receiver to add more speakers to your system if you desire. So even if you don't need more power, even if your AV receiver has enough juice for your speakers, it may not have enough amplifiers built in to power your full system. So that's why pre-outs are important. Now the age old question is, what's the difference between an AV processor and an AV receiver? Why should I consider going to an AV processor if I already have a receiver that gives me pre-outs that gives me the ability to add external amplification. What is the difference? Why is there more money for a processor than a receiver? Well, the biggest thing and the, really the only thing is the sound quality. Even though your receiver has AV pre-outs, it does not sound the same as maybe moving up to the AV processor that your manufacturer offers you. For example, I had a Marantz AV receiver for a long time and I loved it and I used the pre-out on the back of it and it really changed my sound or the potential that my speakers have. But now I own an AV processor. I actually ended up buying at the time the Marantz 7706. It's the pre-processor version of the AV receiver that I already had. And even that woke up my sound, but what about it made my sound different? Well, AV processors, not only do they still have pre-outs, but they also have different DACs inside them, digital analog converters. That allows your system to take its next level in ultimate sound quality. AV processors have no internal amplification, meaning there are no built-in amps like AV receivers have. They rely on external amplification only. There's two great benefits to that. One, you're going to get more power most of the time out of an AV, AV processor and external amplification combination than you will out of an AV receiver. So more power is always good. But secondly, AV processors use DACs that you usually do not get in the AV receivers. That's what makes them different. That's what makes them sound better. You get the same decoding, you get the same Bluetooth features, you get the same Rune and Spotify Connect and Apple AirPlay, you get all that in both models, but they put better sounding DACs, higher bitrate DACs inside of AV processors because they know that you have to utilize better equipment to run an AV processor. So you just have a way better sound than you do on an AV receiver. 
Now, one thing you may have not thought about when comparing AV processors and AV receivers is the voltage output, meaning how many volts does this RCA output have when I'm sending it to my, my external amplifier? What does that mean exactly? Well, everything's rated in volts. When it comes to RCA preouts, there's volts. Let's use the subwoofer, for example. Have you ever had a subwoofer that wouldn't turn on when you're watching a movie at low volumes? You have to turn up the volume pretty high to get the subwoofer to kick on. Why is that? Well, AV preouts or even preprocessor preouts have a voltage rating. And the higher the volts, the more sensitive the RCA input and output is. So you don't have to turn up the volume as loud to get some feedback sent to that subwoofer. AV processors usually have higher voltage preouts than AV receivers, meaning it doesn't take as much power to trigger your equipment to turn on like it does on an AV receiver. Now, this isn't the same for every AV receiver and processor. It kind of depends the manufacturer, but typically an AV processor has more sensitive preout so that you can trigger your equipment like a subwoofer more easily without having to turn the volume knob up really high to get the signal sent to your subwoofer. So if you ever had a subwoofer that wouldn't turn on, it turns off during a movie, well, AV processors, RCA outputs have a little higher voltage, so that's not a problem, usually. So to end the video, let's just answer this last question. Which one's better? If I have an AV receiver with pre-outs right now, is it worth upgrading to a more expensive AV processor just to have one? Is it worth it? Well, the answer is it depends on how you listen to your system. If you have AV outputs on your AV receiver right now, if you have RCA outputs on your AV receiver right now and you don't use them, it's not worth going to a preprocessor because you have to use them. That means you have to have external amplification. If you have AV, uh, AV receiver and you have pre-outs right now and you are using them, it may be worth the upgrade depending on how loud you listen to your music. How many speakers do you have? If you have more than 11, you probably already have an AV processor right now because AV processors have more channel outputs than AV receivers do, except maybe one, the Denon. But other than that, or even Marantz nowadays has a lot of options for you as far as speakers, but most AV receivers don't process as many channels as AV processors do. It's a lot of processing going on. Hope you're processing this video as good as possible. It can be confusing. <laughs> but at the end of the day, it's only worth it to go to an AV processor if you're going to utilize all of the outputs and inputs. AV processors come standard basically with a set number of speaker options. So if you're not going to use a lot of speakers, if you're gonna have a five channel system or a seven channel system, you don't need a processor. Even nine channels, you don't need a processor. If you're using 11, 13, 15, or more, you need a processor. You may not even have a choice. You might have to go to a processor to use all those speakers. So it just depends on how you use your system. For me, I will always and forever have a processor, and I will always have at least 11 speakers in my system. I will always have external amplification and I will always want the best available audio quality that I can get. Whether I can hear it or not, it does not matter. I want to know, I want to rest assured that I have the latest sound quality available to me so that I know that I'm always getting my money's worth. Because if you're like me, I'm not rich. So when I do put a lot of money towards something, I want to know that my money is well spent. I don't want to feel like I'm not getting the best out of what I have because I paid full retail price for what I have. So it kind of just depends the person and how often and how hard, how critical you listen to your system. That's gonna be my opinion and I wanna hear yours down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. Remember, we are creeping pretty quickly towards 30,000 subscribers. I wanna figure out a really big giveaway. So I'm gonna see if I can't reach out to some manufacturers and get some giveaways going on the channel for 30K. So definitely subscribe if you're not already. Hit that like button and definitely leave me a comment down below. Which one are you using, a preprocessor or an AV receiver? And if you have an AV receiver, does it have pre-outs? Are you using it? Let me know down below in the comment section. Hit that like button and subscribe if you are not already. And we will see you in the next video.
Keep this guy out. Peace.